Hey there guys, how are you? So here's my take on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Out of the Shadows. Well hey there Megan Fox, how you doing? Epic Elmo Drop! Cowabunga, what is this movie all about? The turtles go up against their biggest threat ever, Krang. All right, so first things first, this movie's leaps and bounds better than that previous Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie because this movie's watchable. Yeah, when I was in the theater watching this up on the big screen, I didn't want to choke to death on my Sour Patch Kids. So good job, movie studio. You made a better sequel than the previous film, and that doesn't happen too often in Hollywood, but that doesn't mean that you made a good movie. Now, when it comes to these new TMNT movies, they just come across like the poor man's version of Michael Bay movies. Everything is almost essentially the same as far as style, tone, cinematography, and the overly contrast color palette that they use. And I understand the mindset of the producers behind this film because they want these movies to feel like Transformers movies because Transformers movies, they make a lot of money. They're not good movies, but they make a lot of money and they think if they can market it and stylize it that same way, well, their movie's gonna do the same. Now listen, I know it sounds like I'm being negative, and that's because I am, and I have a lot more negative things to say before I mention a few positives, but I just really like Team and T. I like the originals, I like what these movies are based on, and that is comic books that were a little bit dark and a little bit edgy, and that original 1990 film, it captured all that so perfectly. Just real quick, let me get off track and we'll get back to the movie, but in that movie, when Danny the runaway kid goes to that warehouse, and there's kids skateboarding and playing arcade machines and like smoking cigarettes, when I was a kid, I was like, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna run away tonight, and go there and join the foot. Yeah, that's right. When I was a kid, I didn't want to be a Ninja Turtle. I wanted to join Shredder's Foot Clan and play video games and skateboard and shit. Now, like I said a few seconds ago, this movie is leaps and bounds better than the previous film because the previous film, it was just a mess. So when I went into the sequel, I really had low expectations, but I was pleasantly surprised at a lot of things. The dynamic between the turtles was better. They were more entertaining. Johnny Knoxville isn't the voice of Leonardo anymore, which I give that two thumbs up. And the biggest positive I can give this movie is the Ninja Turtles felt like the Ninja Turtles. I I felt like all of their personalities were captured very well. For example, early on in the movie, there's a car chase sequence, and Raphael's like, I can't take this anymore, I gotta do something about it. That almost sounds like Rocky Balboa, but anyway, he jumps out of the back of this van and just kicks all this ass real quick, and jumps right back into it, and I'm like, yeah, that's Raphael, that's perfect. And I like the look of these Ninja Turtles. I like that they look like buff bodybuilders painted green with shells on their back who like to eat pizza. There are definitely things that could have been tweaked and changed just to make them look more visually interesting. Like, such as the Technodrome at the end of the movie, it just felt like a Transformers plot interjected into a Ninja Turtles movie. I would actually like to see more of, like, a thing that looked like the Technodrome, not just a thing that resembled it. Uh, and also, the movie has Krang. We get to see Krang in live action for the first time ever, and Bebop and Rocksteady. Let's talk about all that. Now, as far as the character of Krang goes, he's always looked like a chewed up piece of bubblegum from outer space, and he doesn't really have much personality. He's just an evil bad guy who's one-dimensional, and... That's what he is in this movie. So if you didn't like Krang from the animated TV series, well, you're not gonna like him in this movie. And every time that you see Krang in the movie, he is interesting to watch. I'm not saying it's phenomenal, but it is visually pleasing to look at. It's just, I like weird shit, and that's exactly what Krang is. How would you feel about being some little brain in a giant robot suit? It makes you wonder, doesn't it? It really puts life in perspective. <laughs> and also, speaking of villains, we get to see the Shredder once again. And fuck the Shredder in this movie, because as much as they got Krang right, they just fucking destroyed Shredder. Now, when it comes to the character of Shredder, he is supposed to be the arch nemesis to the Turtles. He's mysterious, he's dark, he's kind of a badass. And in this movie, well, none of those things exist. There is no mystery. For the most part, you just see some guy standing around talking, doesn't really have a personality. And when it comes to seeing Shredder in his suit, it looks terrible. It just looks... I, it didn't even resemble Shredder. For me, the character of the Shredder isn't even in this movie. He doesn't exist. That could have just been called bad guy who does some random stuff to carry the plot along. And a few more villains I quickly want to talk about is we get to see Bebop and Rocksteady. And if you guys like the animated TV series, once again, I think they captured those characters perfectly for this live action adaptation. It would have been nice if they utilized them a little bit differently throughout the action scenes to make them do more interesting things. Because some of the things they do just feel a little bit underwhelming at times, but as far as Bebop and Rocksteady go, it was just cool to see them in a Ninja Turtles movie in live action. And by the way, very quickly, since I'm so stuck on the past, uh, do you guys remember Secret of the Ooze? The villains of that movie were Tokar and Razor. Yeah, those were just direct ripoffs of Bebop and Rocksteady. And the reason behind that was 
legal issues. They originally wanted Bebop and Rocksteady to be in that movie, but there were a whole bunch of legal issues keeping that, so they just made direct ripoffs. So yeah, that's just a quick flick fact for you. Let's keep going. And last, but certainly maybe least, this movie also stars Stephen Amell as Casey Jones. And I'm just going to say this. Stephen Amell might make a better Arrow than Casey Jones, because I didn't ever once get a Casey Jones vibe. I mean, it's like, sure, take some liberties. The character of Casey Jones doesn't need to look like a homeless guy, but he needs to have a little bit more grit and grunginess to him than Stephen Amell does. It just looked like some clean cut guy walking around doing things and they call him Casey Jones. And at one point he puts a hockey mask on. <laughs> That's it. So here are my final flicking thoughts on Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. I would say this movie tries to go bigger and better and go to more locations than the previous movie did, but that doesn't always make a better movie because when it comes down to it, we want almost a low-key movie. We just want to see the turtles eating pizza and running around the sewer pipes. And what I'm talking about is there's a scene in this movie where the Ninja Turtles skydive from one plane to another plane and it crash lands into the Amazon forest and they end up in a river. There's an army tank there. And it's just like, what the fuck am I watching right now? I just want to see the Ninja Turtles eating pizza. It's like, is this the Point Break remake or Ninja Turtles movie? I, did, I didn't quite know. And I just felt like it was really out of place. And another thing that this movie does is it almost dumbs everything down to the point of exhaustion. It's like, I understand that this movie's for kids, but kids aren't that stupid. You don't have to have every character talking to themselves to explain what they're doing next. It's like, okay, I'm a character in this movie. I'm sitting alone in my car talking to myself right now because the audience doesn't understand that. And I have to go drive somewhere to carry the plot along. And I'm just gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go here now because of this. It's like, you don't have to say everything out loud. Just show the car going to this location. We'll get it. But with all those negatives behind us right now, I will say this movie's way better than the previous film, and it does have some very reminiscent vibes to the original 1990s animated TV show, which is good, I like that, and I feel like younger kids will enjoy this movie, it is entertaining, so I'm going to give Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out of the shadows, ugh, a D plus. Okay guys, so that's my take on this movie, now here's my question to you, let me know down below, what do you guys want to see in the next TMNT movie? I just want to see a good movie, and by the way, which Ninja Turtle would you be if you could pick one? I gotta go with Raphael, gotta go with them. And by the way, if you haven't already, please make sure you watch my last movie review for X-Men Apocalypse. That's a good time, I'll put a link to that down below. Click it, watch it. Like, you know, if you got nothing better to do or you gotta go take a poop, just watch my video on your phone. That's all I ask. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe. That way, I can see you next time.